Here's story on the sports update. Get elaboration from Bilson. Hey everybody, I'm Marky Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri-City Sports fans. The name of the program is Tri-City Sports Now on 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities, where we own the Tri-Cities. I have a lineup of guests today. Now, obviously, my own opinions, that's what I want to carry the show. Oftentimes, I'll do two hours straight just talking about and giving my comments on the takes of the world, both locally and nationally, primarily locally, uh, here on Tri-City Sports Now. And certainly, we're going to talk a little bit about ETSU going for their program record 17th straight victory on the men's basketball hardwood over in Greensboro tonight at 7. The Spartans of UNCG are actually two-point favorites. The Cincinnati Bearcats have tied ETSU for having the longest winning streak in the country. However, if the Bucks can get past UNCG, take it from me, the Bearcats schedule a bit tougher than ETSU's. It's possible with a victory tonight. Let's count our chickens before they hatch. Why don't we? ETSU could go into the NCAA tournament on a 24, you heard me, 24-game winning streak. Now, that is wishful thinking. Actually, I'm not sure it is wishful thinking. Optimistic thinking, not wishful. But in a few minutes, I'm going to talk to Jeff Mills. He writes for Greensboro.com. He'll break down the ball game for us. And tell us the changes since the last time ETSU and Green and UNCG played. They don't like North Carolina Greensboro anymore. It's UNCG. So that game, a 10-point victory for the Bucks in Johnson City about a month ago. Now, in the Greensboro Coliseum, where they used to hold the ACC tournament, where I saw ACDC open up the Ball Breaker Tour. Actually hung with Brian Johnson before the show and Malcolm Young afterwards. That was memorable. But nevertheless, anyway, Jeff Mills is going to be joining us. Then after that, somebody I'm going to talk to here, I'm going to talk about a story he wrote, Craig Meyer, uh, sports writer for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Yeah, my old paper. But he wrote this great story about something I talk about all the time, and it's something that might actually keep Steve Forbes at ETSU to be the coach that can take them to the next level, let's just say, which a lot of Bucks fans would like. Uh, certainly uh, mid-major, it seems that you get a coach and he's successful, you're destined to be a stepping stone. But here's the deal. Steve Forbes is going to be 53 next year, or excuse me, next month. He'll be 54 next year. And that becomes long in the tooth. How long in the tooth? I've got the stats. I'm going to tell you here in just a second on Marquis' monologue. 1 p.m. We promoted this on Facebook. Vito Stellino, who is going to tell us. This is why I say, you hear it on the sports update. We'll tell it to you here. Vito Stellino, Jacksonville-based sports writer, but someone who has covered the NFL for more than 50 years. He's got a Hall of Fame vote. He's going to tell us what went on in the war room. Why Everson Walls and Joe Jacoby are frowning. Why the former SOCON players like Randy Moss and Terrell Owens are smiling. And then finally, Jerry Bonkowski. There was yesterday the clash. Daytona. Daytona 500 is coming away. Uh, coming up this weekend. And the NASCAR, the silly season starts. So our old friend Jerry Bonkowski will join me here in the uh, final hour as well. We've got a lot of people here today. Now, I've mentioned this before. I just mentioned it a minute ago. The downside of being an ETSU fan. It's destined that your coach is going to be uh, using ETSU as a stepping stone for another job, right? Possibly. This is Marquis' monologue. So let's just say Steve Forbes leads the Bucks. 16 wins in a row, nation's longest winning streak, longest in program history, tied with 2004 Buccaneers. But let's just say that they uh, go to the NCAA tournament, second straight year. Heck, let's say they pick off a victory. Bracketology, most people think that uh, 12 point, you know, 12 seed, okay, you're 12 seed, you're going up against a five. It's a winnable game. 
Now, I mentioned to you on Friday that Forbes, he's a native of Iowa. Uh, his parents still live there. And the Hawkeyes might lose 20 games this year. They'd have to lose out, but pretty much everybody they're going to play here on out will have a better one-loss record than they will. So that's possible that they could lose out. They lost, uh, they've got four games left regular season, uh, lost le this past weekend, all this. Their coach is Fran McCafferty. Now, the flip side here, though, he's two years off of taking the Hawkeyes to three straight NCAA tournament berths. By the way, McCafferty used to coach at UNCG. Took him to the NCAAs in 2001. He's been to eight NCAA tournaments. So do you want to fire him after a bad year? That's the question. Two years after taking Iowa to three straight NCAAs? Uh, after you've extended his contract to 2024? Hmm. Now, coaches like Kevin Stallings at Pitt, and for that matter, Tubby Smith at Memphis, are in their second years. Usually a coach is given three. Stallings might not be, but... Status of Bruce Pearl at Auburn, Tom Izzo at Michigan State, David Padgett at Louisville, and Sean Mill at Arizona. Uh, they're in the air because of scandal, but uh, there's no way a school like that is going to then bring in a coach like Forbes, who, rightly or wrongly, did have a one-year show cause penalty. Just not going to do it. It's too, you know. Bottom line is ETSU has backed their men's basketball program enough that we at least know a school interested in his services will have to rank as high as New Mexico, where Forbes interviewed last offseason before the position of Lobo's head men's basketball coach went to Paul Weir, late of New Mexico State. Now, uh, I want to point this out, that in previous years, Murray Barto, once I don't know if he ever interviewed there, but was getting attention from North Carolina Wilmington. And really, on the grand scheme of things, I know UNCW is uh, in a little bit better of a conference than ETSU, but is that significantly a better program? I mean, I can remember them winning an NCAA game. I can remember ETSU winning them NCAA game. Admittedly, the uh, uh, UNCW's victory in the NCAA is a little more recent, but you know, is that really a significantly better program than ETSU? Think about that. College of Charleston. Ed DeChillis once looked at going to College of Charleston, interviewed there, while they were both in the SOCON. I'm speaking of ETSU and Char College of Charleston. Both were, And here was ETSU, who had just won the regular season conference championship, and Achilles was interviewing at C of C. He also interviewed at Duquesne, which is in the A-10, but hasn't made the NCAA since 1977. And a lot of people say you're just not going to be able to win there. After all, they haven't made the NCAAs since 1977. So it's unlikely that those sort of schools will be able to pluck the ETSU coach away. Look, in the history, I've mentioned this, there have actually been four coaches, uh, three in modern times, that have left. Two of them left for their alma maters, DeChillis and Les Robinson. Sonny Smith, back in the 70s, left after two years to go to Auburn, who actually had never made the NCAAs at that time, but who was going to the, from uh, the SOCON. I think they just had joined the SOCON at ETSU. And, uh, of course, Auburn was in the SEC. Flip side also, if you want to go way, way, way back, Gene McMurray, the man who nicknamed ETSC the Buccaneers from teachers. McMurray, in, at the end of 1947, left ETSU as a coach to work in administration at Ole Miss. Okay, so if you want to you can count that, although that wasn't a coaching, quote-unquote, position. I mean, yeah. John Robert Bell left ETSU to go work for uh, a fellowship of Christian athletes. So the ETSU as a program, it's risen to the point where maybe some programs that thought they could pluck away the coach and possibly, you know, could at least get him in for an interview, they're probably not going to be on the radar now. For the record, if you're wondering, okay, who are the New Mexico Lobos? I've never heard of the New Mexico Lobos. Well, you should have. They're members of the Mountain West Conference which includes UNLV. Everybody's heard of UNLV. Currently has the ninth highest RPI among college basketball conferences. New Mexico, the Lobos, they've made the NCAAs 14 times. And way back in 1983, they actually hosted the Final Four. That's not happening again, but 
you know, significant basketball history there. ETSU, they're in the 17th ranked conference, SOCOM. They made the NCAAs 10 times in their history. It's only four fewer. I mean, you know. That there, but there are all kinds of reasons why you'd hire Weir over Forbes. It's not to diminish Forbes. But Weir was coming off a 28 and 6 season and an NCAA berth at New Mexico State. So if you're the Lobos, you know, you see this whack opponent, in state rival, and you can pluck their coach away, you're always going to now look like you have the upper hand over the in-state rival by doing that. I mean, that's a significant blow into the prestige of the Aggies, where Zane Vance actually was a defensive coordinator. Vance, uh, former football player at ETSU and uh, coach at Unicoi County in Dobbins Bennett, as a matter of fact. But here's the big deal. We are 14 years younger than Forbes. We've talked about this a lot. Meyer of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Craig Meyer, he's going to join me in a few minutes at 1245. He wrote a story last week. He found out that if the 187 coaching hires since 1999 in major conferences, so that would be the top five now and the Big East back in the day, in major conferences, 187 coaching changes since 1999 and only 19 of the coaches that were hired were 55 or over. The new Big East is not included, but the Big East with Virginia Tech, let's say, that was included, because that was a major conference at the time. But yeah, so Patrick Ewing getting the hire at Georgetown, now they're saying the Big East is no longer a major conference. Okay. Tubby Smith getting the hire at Memphis, that's you know, the Americans, so that's just missing the boat. Forbes, of course, next month will be 53, as I mentioned before. The average age of new coaches hired since 2008 is 46. Last season, the average age of new head coaching hires in college basketball, 43 years old. 43.4, if you must know. But you know. And Forbes is 10 years older than that. Now, furthermore, of those 19 hires at major colleges, major conferences, those are obviously colleges too, since 1999, only seven of those hires are still at their school. Most of the recent hires have had far more experience than Forbes' as head coach. Say Ben Howland, Mississippi State, took UCLA to the national championship final. Didn't care about it. You know, Mississippi State can get a coach that, you know, played, uh, coached his team for the national championship. Let's hire him. We're Mississippi State. That's, you know, UCLA's old coach? Yeah, let's get him. We get that. Age is not a fact. Or take Tennessee. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can get Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes has made the NCAA tournament in 19 of the last 20 years. We don't care if he's 60-something. We're hiring him. But they've got a track record at major colleges. Very good. You couldn't go wrong. I mean, you know, Forbes, even if the Bucks make the NCAAs, win, say, 25 games, you know, it's, well, that's ETSU. Who'd you play again? You didn't beat Xavier, did you? you? Threw that game away. Hey, couldn't you have coached it to a victory? We play big boys here. But you're saying, well, Marky, you just said that Forbes is 55, not 53. Very good point. Or excuse me, he's 53, not 55. Good point. Meyer, who again will join me in just a few, only in the last 10 years, there have only been four more coaches who were hired who were 53 and older, than 55. So consider that. So it's still, you know, it's still a little long in the tooth for a lot of programs. Now, this does not ensure superb stability. Like I said, there have been coaching hires, you know, but the average age, it's becoming with every increasing year, it's going to be harder and harder and harder for him to get a significantly better job than ETSU. Now, I'll give you an example here. Uh... And also, if Forbes does leave, it's going to be the last upward move of his coaching career in all likelihood. I mean, he doesn't go to, well, let's just say LaSalle, which might be hiring a coach. I mean, just throw that out there. Okay, LaSalle. Uh, and I'll tell you the benefits and the negatives here in just a second about LaSalle. But if you were going, that'd be where you'd go. I mean, you're not, 
I don't care what you did at LaSalle and consider the ceiling you have at LaSalle. Well, okay, it's the Atlantic 10. You could be nationally ranked at LaSalle, a little bit easier than ETSU, don't get us wrong. But you're not going to become the head coach of a major program as you've got to prove your worth then all over at LaSalle. And by the time then that comes around, you're 57 and all this. And, you know, that makes it difficult. So the last, the next move Forbes makes, if he does make one, is going to be the last upward climb he makes in his college coaching career. Now let's just use LaSalle, because LaSalle is, you know, supposedly going to make a coaching change after this year, all right? Now, you go there, they've won the national championship in their history, they're in the Atlantic 10, major market prestige in Philadelphia, money, you're going to make about $300,000 more than you would at ETSU. But that national championship for the LaSalle Explorers came in 1954. ETSU became a Division I program in 1957, since that time, LaSalle and ETSU have both made the Sweet 16 one time. Might be just as easy to get there from Johnson City as it is from Philly. Media in Philly is going to be a lot more critical of you than you are in Johnson City. Real estate taxes, much higher there. So a lot of that extra money gets eaten up. And you know what? You'd also be an afterthought there. I mean, ETSU... Yeah, maybe you're an afterthought behind Tennessee. We can debate that. But in Philly, at LaSalle, you're an afterthought behind all the pro sports teams, Temple and Villanova. So with ETSU looking more and more like a program that will contend for a Southern Conference title, as long as Forbes is at the helm on an annual basis, and perhaps even longer than that, departing for such a program like in New Mexico, or like I said, I'm looking at the programs that could be making coaching hires, that could be cutting open the goose that laid the golden egg for Steve Forbes. I am Marquis Bill. On the other hand, if you can get one of those top five jobs, you know, yeah, they're going to be paying you a lot more. You know, if you can get Iowa, you can get Pitt. I mean, yeah, you're obviously, you'd be a fool not to take it. Tri-City Sports now coming back with Jeff Mills as we break down arguably the college basketball game of the day, ETSU versus UNCG, not in a SOCON, in a country. Debatable. Tri-City Sports now. You can visit the gift shop to purchase these unique items. Get involved and come explore Clinton's rich culture at the Tenasi Art Center.